Okay, I'm not into drugs, I swear. Um, the title of this is called Getting High with Plotkin, and while some of you may wonder why it is and some of you may not care, um, friends of mine like to make fun of me because when I'm up taking photographs, I really like to get really high. My friends Jess and Matt, they thought it'd be funny to get a hashtag on Twitter, so they started this Getting High with Plotkin hashtag, so that's where this kind of comes from. So what happens is, um, I think I'm generally afraid of heights, but I think when you put a camera in my hand, my IQ drops about 40, 50 points, and then I'm thinking, hey, this is a great idea. I think I'll go on top of a fire ladder truck, or I'll go on top of a stadium, and I'll just start taking photographs, not worried about falling or anything like that. So I'm in this comical sweet spot in my career right now where people allow me to do things like this, where they say, well, I trust Jason. You know, he can go up there, he can take photos, he'll be fine. But I'm also in this kind of strange medical position right now because I'm 45 right now and I've had surgery recently on my knee and my hernia and my back and I've had four or five eye surgeries. So I'm getting to the point where I really can't do, or I won't be at least soon enough. Um, but this is part of what we do. This is part of what we do as photojournalists is perspectives. It's showing things in positions and perspectives that people don't normally see. And not just physically and not just in that area, but also emotionally. This was probably the first couple years that I was on the job, probably one of the worst days I've ever covered. Um, we get a call on a scanner that a gentleman was power washing a building. He got struck by lightning while he was in a cherry picker, and he was dead. So we get to the scene, and all the firefighters are there, and we're there, and suddenly they start to bring the cherry picker down, and they hear him. He's moaning. And they realize this has turned from a recovery to a rescue. So what I do is I get into this building and up on a balcony. And as they were bringing the gentleman by me, I started taking photographs. I had never seen anything like this before. I never smelled anything like this before. I had never heard anything like this before. And the combination of all of that was too much. But you take it back to the office, you process your film, and you move. And over the next couple of weeks, we wrote stories about who he was, but what he did, and not just leaving it at a single moment. It's showing a different perspective of someone, and as journalists showing someone, he's not just the person you see in this image. Two weeks later, he died. Let's jump ahead 15 years later, 15, 20 years later. I'm talking to a group of people who work for the emergency services in York County. And I'm telling this story and I'm explaining to them about how this, how traumatic this was and how it's something I'll never forget. And suddenly this woman stands up and she starts walking towards me. And I'm wondering, what is she going to do? And she says to me in front of everyone, that was my brother. And she hugs me. And she said, I just wanted to say thank you for how you treated him after this all went down. The perspective you showed of who he was and not just what he was. You see, the first lesson of perspective I learned the first year on the job. It's in a photograph that you will not see here because it's a photograph I never took. In 1995, in December, a man in West Manchester Township broke into his family's home and he started taking, just started firing, just had his gun, was shooting up the place at four o'clock in the morning. His wife takes off and he is holding his five sons hostage. In the process of all this, a police officer during this police standoff sticks his face out from behind a corner and the man shoots him in the face. Doesn't kill the police officer, but enough that he's, he's scarred. Police standoff goes off for a while. His sons eventually are let go. And then he wraps himself in the American flag and kills himself. Now, I'm not there for any of that. I'm not there for any of that. But a couple days later, I'm sent to cover his funeral. I didn't understand why I was there. I'm, I'm sitting across the street from the funeral home with a reporter, and the whole time I'm thinking, why are we here? Why do we care? This guy's a scumbag. He shot a police officer, threatened to kill his family. Why should anyone care who this guy is? So I didn't take any photographs. 
This is before cell phones, so my editor didn't call me or anything and be like, hey, how's it going? There's nothing on Twitter. This is 1995. I come back to the office, and my editor says, what do you got? I said, uh, I don't have anything. I told him what happened. And to his credit, now he could have been angry, but to his credit, he pulled me aside and he said, number one, you should have told me how you felt about this. Number two, he said, were there people coming in and out of the funeral home? I said, actually, there was a decent line of people coming in and out of the house and funeral home. He goes, that's why we're there. That's why we're there. It's perspective that other people will never see or know, and that is our job to do, is to show the other side of what is there. And as horrific and terrible as that scene was, there were people out there who loved him. They loved him. And he is not to be defined by the final moments of his life by but the people and the actions before that. Look, I don't believe in a lot of things. I believe in duct tape, and I believe in journalism. And I believe in what good journalism could do for a community. I walk into a room, you shouldn't have any, any idea about how I feel about anything. If I'm the air cover, you shouldn't know my political leanings. You should know my religious beliefs. You shouldn't know whether I think Batman could beat Superman in a fight. Although we all know with preparation, Batman can take Superman in a fight. We'll argue that later. But for as these years go on and things go further and I can physically no longer do these things to show these perspectives of getting up high, I will always continue to try to get emotionally close and show that emotional perspective and journalistic perspective of what we do. Thank you.